the Gorm bat guy will be entering the undead red guard uh, on say. He rises looking for necromancer. He rises. He shambles. Flesh barely held on by cloth and sinew. He struggles. Obviously, the thing that's going to stand out the most is going to be the eyes and the orange. The orange is so bright compared to the rest of the colors. And I love that because the orange frames the face and draws you into those bright blue eyes. I, I love the contrast. Uh, something I like to talk about in armors is the contrast. The whites against like the ashen blacks, uh, the browns and the grays. Gorum didn't go with too dark of a black here because it's tempting to go with a really dark black. But the um, the torso um, that he used, you can see all of the inlays in it thanks to using that kind of lighter, lighter black. I love how baggy the outfit is because it, it I, it's a mummy, obviously trying to cover most of its undeath. But also, this is a, a valiant Red Guard warrior. Still has a lot of the trappings of that, that centuries-old life. Um, so the bagginess works really well. I love the choice of boot because it has a really tight calf. The way the pants poof out works really well. I love, the, I love how the pants poof out of the top. It really gives you that kind of Red Guard um, hammer feel, fell feel to it. Um, mixed with that, that undeath. And again, as you look up, you can see like the ash and blacks on the leather. You can see the really details. Again, the color choices are so good because you can see so many of the, the, the details in the metal and the leathers. I love the framing here also because the broad shoulders brought out by the pads, the face framed by the hood that kind of widens everything out. It makes it makes the character feel much more ominous and large. Something else that's really hard to do in fashion um, especially when mixing styles is getting things to work together, right? Getting hips and boots and pants and gloves to work um, when they're different styles. And this works really well. You don't get a lot of floating, which you know, I never mark anyone down for floating, but the shoulders don't float. They fit obviously pretty, really well. When we look at the, the face, we have the, um, we have the, 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 the personality. So shambling and undead trying to hold themselves together. You can see the undeath in the eyes and the face, but because they were mummified, you have the mummy wraps uh, the, the Mortal Kombat face mask, as I like to call it. This character looks amazing, really fits the backstory. But if I was going to compare it to a different um, franchise, you could take this character and you could plug it into Mortal Kombat <laughs> very easily. And I love that. Ooh, I was about to ask why we didn't see any weapons. It didn't even dawn on me that the spectral weapons, the spectral weapons work so well, too. And the thing I want to point out that's really cool is because they put away their weapon while it was on fire with the weapon ability, it looks like their back's on fire for a bit, bit of time, which looks super cool with them holding the other sword and doing their um their sword sword stances. Tremendous, tremendous. All right, so next up is Zulu Skunk. Vincent Valentine from Final Fantasy meets Dante from Devil May Cry. So we're getting a, a mix of those wonderful uh, Japanese series Devil May Cry with Dante and Vincent Valentine. It's a very powerful initial look. Um, you can already see the character inspirations adapting uh vincent valentine the colors go super well together you found a really good i love the red you found instead of going with like a super shockingly bright red you went with a really really like saturated red um and i think that saturated red against the black really makes the colors stand out um especially the silver accents that go so well with the character's hair just looking at the 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 back silhouette i love that super slender silhouette on the character i love the gold too it really pops against the black the fabric choices look super great again i love the silver stitching and how the silver stitching across the chest there and the belt um really makes the character stand out pointy sharp boots which you can see there um and I love how those look. I love the tight, thin pants that really make sure that we see the like the entire shape. Like you see the shoulders, the Doritos in, V's back out, goes into that very long frame. And that long frame works so well with the with the style. The 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 shoulders, how we get the cowling and the cape, right? Around the top. And then the staff choice is just honestly, that's a perfect staff to go with. It's a really stunning, stunning look. I love that piercing choice. I love the 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 milky all white eyes. The horns. The everything about the character just works well. The hair is perfect. Again, I love how the hair and the eyes complement the silver chains. I love how all the gold pieces tie together. I love how basically all of the colors work with each other to create this really masterful outfit. It's one of those outfits that you would think was all one style if you didn't know that it was a blending of multiple different styles. I think part of fashion is 
choosing the right style for the body shape that you have chosen. And again, um, Zulu's character's body shape works so well with these like longer pieces. The second look is Nazgula. This is another thing where blacks matter. The, the choice of blacks against the materials makes all of the pieces stand out. You'd think a mixture of a ton of blacks, you would lose the definition, but with the, the choice in styles here, again, a ton of different styles to make this work, you end up seeing all of the details. You see the layering of the metal, you see the patterning of the skirt. Both the staff choices are super good and work so well. Look at look at how well that staff works with the rest of the outfit. Both looks tremendous. Both looks really, really, again, the, the form, the slender body, the curves of the character stand out so well. It's again, super long and you gotta love it like six or so different styles all come together until like one we have strange boar this look is sophisticated yes with quote marks sophisticated khajiit trying to catch a break first things first i love the lavender i love the lavender i feel like there's so many good dyes in the game and people sometimes shy away from the pinks and the lavenders of it all the the booty shake i love it we got a thick character here um but I love the big boots, right? Big boots, big gloves, big shoulders. This uh, this sophisticated Khajiit just trying to get by. They're, they are they are about it. They are about town and they are about this look. They are flaunting that lavender. Um, I love it because the, the black parts, as you can tell, are, is actually the skin or rather the fur of the Khajiit. So going with those really light colors, creates the stark, stark contrast. So I love seeing the unexpected because usually when you think of that um, Dramora Kynreve, you don't expect it to be just bomb ass kicks. If we get close with the like belt and the, the Kynreve boots, so the, the Kynreve stuff naturally has that red in it, but that red works so well with the lavender to help like separate the, the pieces. Same with the ax, we got the lavender blade with the shining purple ax. So I love how you use that new face paint and I think it looks so good to help the face stand out because it's really easy with a Khajiit's face when it's a single color to blend more than you want it to. So like the use of it on the cheeks helps show the shape of the cheek into the muzzle. And we love we love a mohawk on a kitty. We love a mohawk. Tremendous work, Strange Boar. Uh, Kota Arya, forest sprite of spring. She awakens after winter and cares for the forest from which she is made. It already looks so good. I really like the self look. Um, and I love the combination of the, the different styles. Obviously the gold looks super, super stunning against the green. The brown goes super well with the green. So you have the gold that really like pops, the gold and the brass and the blues. Um, and then the brown that draws back in the, the earth tones. Um, for the sprite, the use of the flower thing. I know that that style was not everybody's favorite, but on this look, it looks so tremendous. It works so well. I love the 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 blooming flowers coming out of the shoulder. You have the the blooming flower at the the tip of the head. Yeah, the coloration, the skin usage, the personality. I love it with the red hair. I like how you use that really really dark crimson lipstick too. Very strong poison ivy vibes. Again, as you get closer, what's really cool about the skin is you can see all of like the vines and the green. And again, I love the browns and the brasses because they, they really, really pop against the skin. If we get like a back silhouette, again, that Prophet staff is just perfect for uh, a silhouette. It looks like just a walking stick, like a stick that you found um, in the forest. So keeping that, that very natural look. Um, again, the choices... I like how the outfit kind of flows into the, the skin. Because if you look at this green piece here, at the hip piece, that's actually part of the um, the outfit that looks like it's naturally part of the skin. Red hair, green complexion. I love the pink flowers. Again, looking at it from this side is really great because the, having the flowers tied on is just so good. Um, obviously, being a Bosmer lends itself really well to turning yourself into a sprite also since the Bosmer have natural like horns or can have natural horns. So tying in the, the kind of natural horns of the Bosmer to the look, I think is tremendous too. If we get closer to the face, Bosmer are also gonna have very kind of alien features, which I like. And I think that helps create this supernatural like look 
to your character's like small stature and tiny build again with the golden eyes everything just goes together a very difficult thing to be able to pull off looks using completely different styles but blend them all together in a way that looks like that was how they were always meant to be really really tremendous concept and you really nailed the execution here so the next person we have is zero watcher easter egg themed the shining egg brother uh cassies i love the colors i love the easter i easter egg theme i love the pinks and the teals pastels i love how you use the pastels pinks and greens and pastels with the gold it's a very regal look but also very colorful spring let's take a look at it from the back i love the like solid uh blue across the shoulder too it works so good with your uh character skin coloring too because you have this golden scaling so this is the um if you look at the golden scale this is the new skin this is the skin that we got from the first part of the event so the skin that we just were able to get last event um which gives the uh the gold like dragon scales up the the tail it brings gold through the chest which the gold we're just looking at the skin the outfit's tremendous but the gold against the dark green and normally i hate the cheeks but on argonians look how good the gold cheeks work on argonians it looks so good and it, it also gives that painted egg effect i love the choice of using that um that skin when you think of easter you think of pastels you think of pinks and purples and greens and all these different bright vivid colors drawn together and like this again you see the same colors in the staff both the staffs topped with that kind of egg-like look but it just works it's a lot of colors um but in the words of todd howard all of this just works i am not kidding get away from me birds <laughs> oh what a joyous character now we've seen an easter egg argonian very two very different takes um on on that on spring it's hard to get a lot of different colors to work if you've ever noticed anything about my own fashion i'm a three color andy right i use like three colors three colors <laughs> i got three colors um but there you saw so many different colors coming together and they all just worked with each other nothing none of them like took away from the others they just built on each other all right so next up we are going to have cats with pika this is going to be a springtime look inspired by the coral coastline of the somerset isles you can already see the the coastline we have those um iridescent colors right the iridescent colors that you think of from the the, the magical coastline of somerset um i love um i love the coloration here i love how the green um is that the new green i I think that's the new green. I could be off though. Um, I like the green against the 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 the, the rosish gold um, with the stags of Zen because it you see all of those bright green lines, but then the, the gold almost seems to glow um, like muscle, um, which with the stag set works super well. Um, I also like that you're using the um, space skin from the last crown crates because that way you get the dark blue and the dark blue contrasts um, really well. Plus, you're talking about a mystical coastline, right? So you want that sparkling, almost starry like water. So instead of space, the skin kind of gives me like that water vibe with like the different sparkles and pearls in it. Apparently, I'm going to hit the wrong button. Um, so we'll take a look from the back From the back. You can, you can see that kind of that dark blue skin against the, the, again, you have like the emerald, the, the kind of deep emerald cloth underneath so that the, uh, iridescent, like, um, sea greenish teal pops against it. The blue skin as that, that water contrast. And then, like I said, the, um, the 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 like the rose goldish parts to it from the, the the rose gold on like the bones and uh the pieces look like sinew and almost like muscle instead of like um like shells you get the look you, you when you and you that makes you think of like crabs and things like that kind of like crustaceans i'm taking a look my, my character only my character's so tall at the belt i like how it has you can see like the the what appears to be seashells. I know they're not actually seashells, but when you look at the rest, it kind of looks like almost a belt of seashells. I love this back silhouette. I love the giant horns that come off of Stags of Zen. 
And then, yeah, we can get closer, and then you can really kind of take a look up close at the helm. And again, I love that um, exoskeleton look that it gives the the whole outfit, mixing those like that color palette from the the um, the Somerset Coast. I think you really nailed the Somerset Coast. A completely different approach to spring. Three approaches to spring from three very unique and talented designers. I love the dye work here. The coloring here is, again, yet another person who did a tremendous job with color. If you look at the character here in the water, they they blend in. Entibs did enter has does have three different characters, three different entries. They have three different characters with three different looks. It gets hot in spring, especially in the south. Doubly so if you have fur. Best time to show some skin, as it were. Gotta love a good rhyme. Straight fact, you can never go wrong with purples and gold. With a more kind of exposed look, um, what you get to see here is that scales. I like how the scales also help. Like, you already have a natural, like, waistline with this with the character, but then the scales, the way they come in, again, kind of help, like, draw attention and accentuate the, like, um, the hips and the waist area of your character. Um, I think the scales actually work super well with obviously, again, you can't go wrong with golds and purples. And um, I think that's um, I think that's that blood or uh, I forgot what the name of the colors. It's the iridescent, though, it's that that beautiful iridescent red, which is kind of almost like a pinkish purplish red, depending on what it's on. And I love how it goes, because when we were walking at a distance when I was this far away, what I noticed was purple and gold. But now that we're actually close in on the outfit, we, we can see that it's actually an opalescent purple. See how it's the purple and blue. So it actually, we have that iridescent opalescent look. Um, so we actually have blues in with the purples. It's got that really pronounced and almost regal, like big metal neckline, but it's got like the, the natural like um, cloth uh, bikini area. So as we kind of go around the character and, and take a look, we can get a look from the behind. Um, and the scaling, you can see how the scales, the Akadosh scales go actually all the way up the tail. So the entire tail ends up being scaled up, up until where it connects with the, the body. Uh, I think the Sapiarch bow is such a good choice. It's got such a pronounced um, look to it. And it works so well with the shapes um, of the other like outfits pieces you use. Ginormous emerald eyes, just like those big golden cat eyes. Um, and it works so well because you have a little green on the shoulder from the leaves. So the green ends up really popping and standing out amidst the, the other colors. Who says you can't wear furs in spring? Well, uh, Gaynor sure doesn't. Wear all the fur. Just let the pecs breathe. Look at them furs. Them pecs, they breathe. Very earth toned. Love the furs. Um, obviously, we see, we it's all natural. You have the leather foot wraps, the choice, the leather foot wraps. With the furs, the stitched leather pants up into the leather skirt. Again, the furs coming out. I like how I love this top. Again, it's the one I use on my orc. It looks so good. It has a great necklace. Um, I love the red body markings, especially since you use greens. We use a lot of you know natural tones. You got greens and grays and browns, very natural tones. Um, so to add that red to the um, very pale skin. It contrasts so well, and it really makes the tattoos, I think, stand out. And then obviously you got that just solid shoulder piece. Um, great, great choice of staff to tie into the rest of the thing. I love the, the long, thick braided hair along with the furs. It looks so good. I love this back profile. Obviously the tattoos are great. The colors are great. The furs are great. The necklace is perfect. You got the jaw, right? You got the chin that can kill a man. You got the cheekbones that could cut a steak. You got a powerful nose. And then you used, I like the piercing choices you used. I love how your eyes, you have those like those really nice emerald eyes. So they, they go really well off the shining emerald of the headdress. Obviously the bones ties through the natural look. Everything is bones and furs and leathers. The belt buckle becomes like a centerpiece for the skirt and the pants in a way that really, really makes it pop. It's just, it, it becomes this like showpiece. Whereas usually the belt buckle is the thing that most of them in fashion are like, fuck, that's a face you don't hide right there. We love a short king. The true story of how uh, Ceruleus got his scars is rather traumatic. He has learned to have a sense of humor about such things. And the story 
he tells is that he was so hot to tease that one day he simply burst into flame. <laughs> he also learned to own his appearance, probably putting his scars on display for the world to see. His eyes, on the other hand, that he hides behind a dashing eye patch. We love an eye patch. Drives the ladies and men and NBs. It drives everyone wild. Let me tell you, good eye patch, good scars, good story. You know how it goes. Look at this character. Another powerful face. I mean, usually I would start with the rest of the outfit, but I'm we have to start with the eye patch and the scars, right? We got we got the afternoon shadow beard, right? We got the hair pulled back so you can see the ear. You got one poking out the other side. I like how the hair comes down, but not enough to hide the eye patch. But this is somebody who's proud of their scars. They got their scars just out to the world. They are tough son of a tough son of a gun, and they they're gonna make sure everyone knows it. But you know, we love. <laughs> You know, a man with a scar is a man with a story. Apparently he burst into flames because he was so damn hot. For a character based on fire, this is basically perfect because you have the reds and the golds, the embers, the blacks of the ash. The belt buckle looks tremendous. I love, I love the, the, the gauntlets too. And the shoulder pads really work. The way like the horns come off of it, but with the gold and the red, it gives it that kind of fiery effect. Same with the staff choice with the horns coming off of it. Everything has that fire look that we're going for with this like character that's burnt and scarred. Let's take a look. I love the, I love everything from the front, from the back. Oh my God, look at the eye. When the fire's out, the green goes away and the eye looks like the eye itself was on fire, not just the, the fireball was holding. That's so cool. All right. Not a cop is entering special weapons and tactics swat slang blade the watcher in the night and the protector of all he is deadly with his blade and only wears minimal armor for speed you may find his badge of agency upon his belt uh this stealthy protector's only weakness weaknesses are water and getting stuck in trees Oof. <laughs> Here's our SWAT. I love the I love how the blue flashes when you're running. That's really cool. I love the blues and blacks. Um, I don't think I'd ever thought I'd see a a, a SWAT <laughs> outfit in ESO, so that's super cool. I like it a lot. Uh, I like how you use the bright blue against the black, the black tacticals of it. So that way when you ran the like lights on the runway flashed off the blue because you know you're in pursuit. Um there's your badge worn on the belt. Very cool. I Again, for a tactic, it's a very good tactical outfit in general. I love the usage of like really tight laced boots, right? You know, you got, if you're going to run for speed, you need a tight, tight boot, stay light on your feet. Obviously, like you said, you keep light armor so you can keep up speed. I love the grays and the blacks for that tactical look, but the bright blue just pops against it and separates the, the dark black pieces from the, the gray pieces. Um, obviously you're using, using hand wraps, make sure that, you know, you're agile while you're on the prowl, but I like, again, the badge on the belt, very clever comes up into that big pronounced helmet, man. If you're, if you have trouble in elsewhere, this is who you call. <laughs> um, taking a look from the back, obviously, uh, I like very stark black skin. I like how it has the mixture cause you use honor guard pieces of what you'd expect from like a Khajiit honor guard, but you mixed in that modern, modern take, right? You mixed in the badge, the SWAT stuff. You have the, the, the tactical vest. Freeze. This one suggests you use your right to remain silent. <laughs> Ooh, that's cool looking too. I like how you have like a multiple kind of, uh, masks depending on the, on the situation. Great look. I love this. Not a cop. Great job. Great job bringing, uh, great job mixing, uh, mixing the modern with the, the fantasy here. Last, but definitely not least, we have Don't Cry Wolf. This character is a Khajiit in the style of local cats, mountain lions. So there's a Khajiit in the style of mountain lions wearing armor with highlights of copper, which conduct my magical powers, uh, whether it be fire, lightning, or cold. Oh, so you're using, utilizing copper in conjunction with like the concept of your character's usage of magic. I love, I love the concept already of the character. Okay. So I love that skin. 
Uh, by the way, that's the skin you get from Molotar. I love the copper choice you used here. I'm going to look at it from the back real quick. I love, love, love the copper. It looks so good, especially illuminated in the amber lighting. I love, I love the metallic skirt here. Um, I like the use of the red body markings because you have your gray tail. It goes into the red body markings, uh, the tattoos, but then the end of the tail lights up from that skin. It's such a cool magical effect. I, and again, you see the, like the really dark coppers. Uh, can, for conducting the magic and the copper looks so good against the the blacks and the grays like the grays the gray helps the copper just pop right it just it stands out from the the armor and those really tall like um really tall shoulders end up looking so good i'm a three color andy i love a, a, a solid like mostly three color palette so like the copper the gray and the black that mixture look, and it works so good with the skin because yeah, when you came out with the helmet on, the helmet has the same wings as the shoulders and you just, all you saw from a distance is those bright eyes. That's the, that's the heroic, uh, that's the heroic shot there. It's the, it's the copper skirt with the like more like, cause it's a slightly different metal than the hips and the, the blades, but I just feel like that, that metal, that metal skirting with the gray looks so just really makes it look so cool. Fashion shows are so unique because look at this, look at Easter egg. Easter egg look. Uh, Boar actually entered on EU a different character, but this character is still fantastic. SWAT, SWAT Khajiit. Man on fire. Literal sprite. Li Again, this is so impressive because a lot of people were down on like the shoulder and a lot of people I heard were down on the skin. And here comes Kota Aria taking these things that people online talk bad about and turns, turns it into a, a literal sprite that looks amazing. The coolest thing about fashion and ESO is they give us so many motifs, so many style pages, so many different dye colors we can unlock. And motifs, other than three motifs, you get them all in game. You don't have to worry about a crown crate. You don't have to worry about anything like that. You can get those, all but three of them you can get in game. Style pages, most of them can be got through doing things in game. Dye colors are got in game. Um, so other than like arms packs um, for like weapons with really special effects, other than arms packs, so, so much fashion is done by things you can actually hunt in game. And I think that's what really appeals to me about fashion. Like in games like WoW, I was a mount hunter because there's so many mounts you could get, but most mounts in ESO are behind a paywall or endeavors now in crates. But with fashion, the bulk of it is stuff you can track down, you can die, you can mix and match, you can use amazing costumes you can get. There's just so much you can get 